Hey, it's the Carlton Brown Foundation Show. Hey, and I like to always introduce my show uh, with Martin Luther King, whose manifestation of, of hope was that one day humanity could get out of his own way and realize that love was not an indicator of weakness or nonviolence, but it was a great indicator of strength. And uh, we're going to be about that action word today. We're going to have a program today uh, about the Citizen Complaint Board of Cincinnati, Ohio, which is going to be very informative about what's going on and how we can change uh, the things going on in the city of Cincinnati, Ohio, and uh, we can deal with what's going on here. Uh, Mr. Herschel Daniels is my guest today. And uh, uh, Mr. Herschel Daniels, could you please tell us a little bit more about what's going on and uh, uh, what we can do as citizens to make sure that things get implemented properly? Okay, so uh, mm -hmm. a little background, okay? Mm -hmm. and the Citizen Complaint Authority is unique uh, and around America. There's probably now maybe a hundred or so programs uh, but back in 2001 uh, through 2005, when we had the monitoring of uh, the agreement between the city, uh, African Americans as a class, and the Department of Justice, but we also had not only the police department, but represented by the city, but we also had the Fraternal Order of Police. Okay, now this came after we, we had had a series of rebellions in the city. Uh, we had a successful boycott. And the whole question was, how do we address the issue of policing in Cincinnati? And so what was agreed as an agreement, okay, with a settlement and a court ordered, okay, and that, that's the key, mm -hmm. okay, that it has some teeth in it, okay, is, is that the court agreement said that we will comp uh, the city will pass in 2002, the city passed a law, okay, that created the Citizen Complaint Authority, now it's what it's called, the CCA. Mm -hmm. And what it required is, is that uh, there be an executive director, uh, that there be a chief investigator, and that there be five investigators. Now, uh, when an incident happens, that a major incident involving the police, uh, either discharge of a weapon, uh, a, uh, a police uh, shooting, a police incident of a major uh, proportion, you can file a complaint uh, with the Citizen Complaint Authority and their investigators who are separate from the police department. See, the police department has their own investigators, internal investigation, but they are police officers. The Citizen Complaint Authority is just that. It is the citizen's means of complaining of actions of the police that then are investigated by a professional investigator who prepares a report, who then goes before the Citizen Complaint Authority panel, and then they take a ruling on what should happen. And that it can, if it warrants it, that that panel and uh, the executive director can go to city council and say, we need a subpoena, okay? All right, we need you to issue a subpoena because we're not getting all the information, we're not getting all the data that we need, we're not getting the situational support that, that we need, okay, to make a fair ruling on this incident, okay? And so it's something that was uh, pretty unique, enough so that the Department of Justice, who in this, those days was no friend of African Americans, okay, joined into this unique process. And the problem is, is that we've let it die on the vine in Cincinnati. We, we let it be starved because of the budget, okay? And I, I don't have to guess and, uh, on that. Uh, I'm a, uh, uh, trained by Colonel Charles Britton, okay, and Colonel Britton, okay, was uh, the, uh, for Betty Montgomery, the Attorney General, she, wrote, uh, he wrote for her the Ohio Peace Officer Training Academy Manual, okay, so I know a little bit about it, okay, uh, that I was his uh, Chief of Staff in the uh, OIC in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. And so, you know, people know Sam Britton, and a lot of older people know his <laughs> brother, Charles, okay, but, you know, uh, like me, uh, Charles was a white sheep of the family, so yeah. <laughs> he, he, he's not here, okay, uh, but uh, 
because I grew up in Cleveland and in Shaker Heights, uh, okay, I knew Charles. I knew a lot of the work when I came back uh, to the States and I came back home to uh, uh, Cleveland, okay. I stayed a little bit in Shaker, but I, I moved back into Cleveland to uh, get involved in the community, yeah, okay. And then I came to Cincinnati, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> and I, I say Cincinnati is where I learned what poverty is. <laughs> Cincinnati is where I, I learned on the other side of what policing is, okay. Uh, but Cincinnati has been good uh, for where in shaping uh, this whole philosophy. I would not be here uh, today, I don't think. I don't think I'd be alive if I wasn't in Cincinnati. Uh, because of well, the uh, medical care with my seven heart attacks, okay? I don't think I'd be here. That's good. But then again, I may not have had the stress of those heart attacks because I was in Cincinnati, all yeah. right? And, yeah. and the stress of this is uh, that we've had police force uh, mishaps uh, where we've had policemen run over uh, citizens in the park who were just laying in the park and their patrol car ran over them and it was judged, okay, that uh, uh, nothing should happen to the officer. The officer was sad that it happened. Uh, uh, we had cases of uh, bones, uh, uh, okay, uh, where the police said, well, he was rushing me with a knife and I had to shoot him. It, the, what happened was is that the camera just happened to go off at that time, okay? Mm -hmm. And so we don't have a record of that. Uh, so all those instances, are, were, are brought to the Citizen Complaint Authority and there's a process that we can use and it gets stronger if we show up. Because we didn't show up in the past decade, they've been able to say, well, we don't need five investigators like what the law says, well, we can get by with a chief investigator and an investigator, okay? But as I pointed out to everybody on uh, the uh, blogosphere uh, and on Facebook today, uh, here's what the law said in 2002, okay, all right? The law says you're supposed to have five investigators. You only got one plus a, a chief. Now, you can't count them as two investigators, okay? Uh, so, you know, we were in a discussion about, you know, the merits of, and matter of fact, while your show's going on uh, mm -hmm. right now, they're discussing the merits of uh, the city manager. And so it's his responsibility uh, to take a look at uh, how the government is run because we have a city manager form of government. Mm -hmm. And so it's his responsibility to know the law. And if it's pointed out to him, uh, like I did in the email that I pointed out to him today, mm -hmm. that the law says that there's supposed to be five investigators, a chief investigator, and an executive director. You have an executive director, a chief investigator, and maybe one in, uh, other investigator, mm -hmm. okay? So, you know, he should be hurrying to fix, I mean, that's a low-hanging fruit item for you to talk about, okay, instead of talking about Sam Malone's, okay, getting paid, okay, uh, uh, you know, and you're wasting your time about, about that rather than the billions that it's going to cost to fix the problem, here's a low one that's going to cost you less than a million dollars, okay? Mm -hmm. Hiring the investigators who investigate the police when they've been accused of doing something wrong. Yes. Okay, that's a vital rebuilding of community trust. And I'll tell you what, uh, President Obama in 2015, after Ferguson in 2014, because see, I was, in, I was actually in St. Louis before this all blew up in Ferguson, okay? And we were doing what we're doing here in terms of uh, getting people ready for jobs and building their community, and building their community by doing construction, which means that if you do construction, anybody can do construction. Well, except for me, I got seven heart attacks, so yes, I, I can't do construction <laughs> anymore, okay? Thank God. Uh, but uh, the, the whole idea was, you know, jobs in the hood, okay? You want peace in the hood? Then let's have some jobs in the hood. Let's not have the $10 billion built in Avondale and then how many of those jobs don't go in Avondale, all right? Uh, so what we have in the city is, is that we have this opportunity to build on all this history. And the history that of the Citizen Complaint Authority is part of a consent decree where the city said, okay, 
we're going to pay off for these group of black men who have been killed by the police, okay? And whatever circumstances in, in that, okay? We're going to pay that off as a class action. We're going to have a settlement that the courts, the federal court, will oversee. We'll appoint a monitor who will study what is happening. We will change the use of force of the police in the city. And I happen to know some very brave brothers who went into the training academy and told the police, now you got to change how you're doing policing, and this is how you, you do policing from now on, OK? And brave brothers, okay, because, you know, they, 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 you want to talk about the blue line? Remember, we had the blue flu here, okay? Mm -hmm. We had police, you know, calling in, oh, I'm sick, I'm, you know, et cetera, okay? That was their protest in that, in that day. We had the police march on City Hall with their, they didn't draw their guns, but, you know, when you, you got 30, 40, 50, 100 police in uniform, marching on City Hall, okay, then it, it makes a dramatic, okay, uh, versus us, the citizens, who were upset in that day, okay. Now, me, I, I have a background in the UNIA and uh, uh, in diplomacy for uh, African nation Guinea to the United States. And so, you know, I'm not really the marching guy, okay? I'm not really the guy who gets out in, in, in the street for marching. But in that, in that day, uh, I had my grandchild, okay? She was out in the street, uh, you know, and uh, uh, she was with my wife and when they called all the ministers out. And so she witnessed the police doing the jump by and coming out and jumping out of their car, shooting the bean bags at the crowd and then jumping back in their car and, and going. Uh, she was in the crowd when uh, these white kids were in the neighborhood and coming and, they, you know, they wanted to be in solidarity. Well, that wasn't quite the time to be in solidarity. It's time for you to get in the car and get out of the hood because nobody's feeling solidarity at this point when Hyde Park is uh, in the curfew. In Hyde Park, everybody don't even know it's a curfew while we in the hood, okay, and, you know, they got us on lockdown. Okay, so when you talk about policing, then you have to talk about Cincinnati because we started a process in the 21st century that the President of the United States in 2015 came to Cincinnati through his task force that he created. Remember, I'm getting back to what I said, okay, back in, into St. Louis. And after Ferguson happened, in December of 2014, he said, I'm the president, uh, Department of Justice, I want a task force. I want that task force to be named 21st Century Policing Task Force. I want you to go around the nations with the uh, 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 police chiefs, and I want you not only the police chiefs, but I want you to deal with also the protesters. Okay, I want them to speak. I want to talk about methods. I want to talk about change. And I want one of those sessions to happen here in Cincinnati. Okay, mm -hmm. and on, uh, I think it was January 30th and 31st at University of Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. All right, they were set up for maybe 200 people to come speak. They had the video, they had the panel, they had police chiefs coming from all around the nation. They had people coming about how policing is technology. They had uh, black policemen, white policemen. Uh, they had female policemen. Uh, they also had black, the early Black Lives Matter because there was actually at that stage there was two Black Lives Matter here in Cincinnati. But what we're going to, uh, what happened was I was one of the speakers. There was plenty of room, okay? I'm talking about, remember I said a couple hundred seats? Hey, we're back. It's the Carlton Brown Foundation Show. You know, um, uh, Mr. Chairman uh, Hershel Daniels Jr., you know, we, we'd like for you to hopefully give us your contact information so people can learn how to reach you so that they can get involved in this process and dealing uh, uh, with these issues, dealing with our police officers, uh, who do act that order, you know, not all of them, mm -hmm. but a few. Yeah, and, and that, that blue line, that, that few makes it us doubt them all because we know that few. Mm -hmm. So you can get a hold of me at uh, uh, email as FAU chairman, 
at uh, au6.info. Okay, so that's FAU chairman at au6.info. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can go to our website at au6.info. Okay, yes, and uh, we're on the, uh, my name is Herschel Daniels Jr., and you can just Google it, and a whole bunch of stuff will come up, okay, about our organization, Friends of the African Union. Okay, uh, you know, I'd like to ask you a few questions so we can get some clarification, you know, for the community that is listening, because some people out there have never heard of 21st century policing, mm -hmm. or if they've heard of it, they don't know the specifics. What I would like to ask you, First of all is, on the Citizen Complaint Board, how do we address the issue as a community where we can come together with you and others to put forth action so we can get the five investigators that we need so they can do the job that they're supposed to do to protect the community from these people who are the few? Okay, so the unity in the community mm -hmm. is, I'm glad you asked that, because the unity in the community is one, you're involved on a block level, then you're on a community level, go to your community council. At each community council, you know, you get a report from your local police, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you've got problems, okay, that's the lowest hanging right where you are. Mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, on a community, so if they see more people involved in the community asking those questions, okay, uh, then the corollary to that is you go vote. Okay, all right, so there's no excuse for you not voting, all right, and in terms of uh, that voting, when you show up every Wednesday, okay, uh, at uh, 1.30 they have public comment, okay, and they've got that public comment, uh, you get two minutes, all right, so you come in and you say 30 seconds, look, I have this problem with the Citizen Complaint Authority not having, okay, five investigators, bam. Send an email. You can send it to a uh, clerk of uh, council at uh, Cincinnati.gov, okay, and it goes to all of the uh, uh, members of council. Make a phone call, all right? Pick up the phone, okay? Call me at 513-858-5275, and we'll be glad to uh, work with you. And, you know, I work with the Carlton Brown Foundation uh, to, you know, bring about change. Okay. Uh, I'd like to ask another question. Sure. You know, we, we see what the result is uh, from the five investigators not being in place. You know, we have an officer who is involved in the incident and all of a sudden his camera turns off. So not having that proper investigator, uh, how much of an urgency do you think it is? Uh, and we'd like to also know, is the city breaking the law by not doing this? Yeah, well, two issues. Uh, 2002. Municipal code, okay, it was passed, right? So there's a council, there's a rule of the city. So, you know, you'd have to get an opinion from the uh, city uh, uh, attorney. Okay, I'm not a lawyer, but it, it seems to me that the city manager is breaking, uh, okay, uh, city code. Okay, whether it's a chargeable offense or not, uh, it's definitely something that our council, remember, we're in a city manager council rules. Six of those council members can make any change that cannot be overridden by the city manager or the mayor. Okay, okay. so if they agree that, okay, we should have five, okay, investigators, mm -hmm. then if, a, you know, a thousand of us show up and say, hey, you know, we don't have to show up at one time, but, you know, we call, we write, we email, or we show up. They said, hmm, that's a problem, okay, yeah. all right, and especially in 2017 when I got to get reelected, mm -hmm. or with, if I'm running for mayor, okay, mm -hmm. and if people raise it as an issue, then maybe I will address it, okay, mm -hmm. and, and so this is, you know, this is my problem that I have with uh, the BLM, uh, Black Lives Matter group, is I was talking in New York with one of the founders for Malcolm X's uh, day of birth, okay, and she was there and gave a speech. I went up to her and I said, have you read the recommendations that the president's 21st century policing task force did for implementation of managing the police? I said, well, we're reading through it. That was in 2015, okay? The report came out uh, by July of last year, 
the report was out, the recommendations were out, and you're just now reading it, okay, on May 19th, 2016? Hmm. I, I got a problem that uh, the uh, Democratic Party uh, mentions Black Lives Matter, and it doesn't seem that, you know, they, they do the real work of governance. Real work of governance means you show up at your community level, you know, not when, when the incident happens, mm -hmm. but because you live in that community, you're at your community council. You know, join your community council. I mean, what, $3 on the average, $3, $5 in the city? Join your community council. Mm -hmm. You have a vote, okay? Use it. That's your power. Our people have died to get that vote for you. Use it. All right. Uh, you know, we'd also like to ask you, you know, uh, you know, these recommendations uh, from uh, President Obama, mm -hmm. you know, for the 21st century policing is to deal with the issues that we're seeing on social media every day. Mm -hmm. We're seeing on our televisions all over the country, even in our own beloved city of Cincinnati, Ohio, where uh, we are not aware if it's been a crime committed. Uh, we see that... Uh, we know that the police, uh, uh, they say that a restaurant employee is trained better than a police officer. Well, uh, a, you know, a, that's a cosmo, the analogy. Well, yes. uh, it's actually a cosmetologist, okay? A you cosmetologist, need, Yeah, you need yes. a, about 619 hours mm -hmm. to be a, uh, uh, and pass the test for uh, the Ohio Peace Officer Training Academy, mm -hmm. right? And yes. the test and et cetera. Mm -hmm. And you need about uh, 1,700 hours to be a cosmetologist. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what we did when we had that settlement, though, is what we added extra use of force. So there's a whole manual now in Cincinnati saying how you have to do, okay, in situational awareness. The problem is, is that you have to have money to keep that training up. So it was big 15 years ago, okay, 10 years ago. It was big. But, you know, you take your eye off of the sparrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And so that's called situational awareness training. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. that you, you, you sort of practice. Now, you know, if you take our, our police chief, okay, you know, uh, you know the situational awareness of, of, of desk duty uh, mm -hmm. versus field duty. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Do you have the ability to react in the field uh, per that manual? Okay, or do you have the administrative capacity uh, to uh, uh, administrate those who have that ability? We, we don't, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, we don't have, I don't have enough data. I don't know who has, maybe Iris, uh, the ACLU, okay, uh, maybe they have the data on where we are now. I'm just becoming re-engaged in the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, and I'm coming at it from a little bit different perspective. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I like to just uh, reach out to the community and let them know, you know, they, you know, they promote the idea as if President Obama has done nothing. And uh, uh, this 21st century police, you know, I had a chance to read it, and I also uh, sat on the board of mm -hmm. my brother's keeper with you uh, for this city, which is a very another excellent program, but. Uh, uh, it will transform our city. You know, I, I advocate to the community when I go out and speak to them that we can't do anything about what's happening in Indiana or Chicago, Detroit, but what we can do is we can do something about our beloved city uh, because we have our children here, we have our neighbors here, and I think it's very important that this type of information about this 21st century policing get out to the community that we organize together uh, that you reach out to us and contact us so I can show up with you at the council meeting. And also bring that meeting and the response live of the city council and so the people can see it. Because it's time that we stand up and, and go and assist our politicians. Because they can't do this by themselves, they need us. So, uh, well, you know, you're involved in that. Yeah. I know that, you know, you're wearing your NCRC badge as well as your Friends of the African Union badge. Mm -hmm. Now, NCRC is the National Community Reinvestment Coalition, and right above it, okay, is Haile Selassie when he was uh, uh, younger, okay, and uh, the uh, Friends of the African Union. 
So we're an organization that's a member of NCRC that believes in economic development begins social enlightenment. Mm -hmm. All right. So our, our thing is, and when I was talking about uh, policing, et cetera, is to do things like put together an academy so we grow our own police okay so that we have a academy that trains you to be a, on the peace side mm -hmm. and a uh, military academy okay and uh, we we broached this in 2010 but then I I was on my second or third heart attack by that time uh, but we the whole idea is that we train up people in the community who believe that they are part of the community and unity in that, that community. Because remember, years ago, they made it so that uh, you don't have to be in the community. You don't have to live in Cincinnati to be employed by Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, it's a question I asked our teachers uh, and the uh, police union reps, how many of your officers or teachers live in the city? How many of you use the public health service that we have here? Okay, you know, uh, for the police, I think we're paying like $70 million uh, uh, in uh, uh, health benefits. I know for the school system, about $45 million. Mm -hmm. And that could help improve our public health service tremendously. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've we got to start thinking out of the box. We've got to mm -hmm. start doing things like, all right, you want to uh, work for us and being a policeman? Great, you're going to get paid this salary. But if you live in the city, we're going to give you a little bit more money. Yes. Okay, so that makes it's legal. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's two tiers. If you live in the city, we're going to help you out, and, you know, in, in your housing, et cetera, because we want you to be involved in the in the community. Okay, I'm going to let everybody know how to contact, uh, you know, our organization and the Carlton Brown Foundation because uh, Friends of the African Union is my fiduciary. Uh, and uh, you can reach me on the FAU Cincinnati on Facebook. Uh, my email is C Brown, A S I L I M I, at gmail.com. Uh, and you can reach me on the Carlton Brown Foundation action page on Facebook. You know, because we can be the change that we need to be together. Would you like to say any last words before I close out, uh, Mr. Daniels? Power to the people, and power to the people is voting. All right. Uh, and, you know, I'd just like to leave you uh, with what I started with was that manifestation of hope of Martin Luther King. And with that, I would like to add an African proverb that if followed could be a way of life that would lead to life forever and ever. And that proverb is, if everyone does a little, it means that one does not have to do a lot. And before you knew it, we will cross an invisible line. And guess what? the impossible will manifest. So let's do this together because I am you and you are me and I love you.